Is your Power Wheels car slow or doesn't work anymore? This video will help fix and improve most issues on a Power Wheels car, such as a dead battery or burned out motor. This is a step-by-step -step guide on how to convert a 6-volt kids ride-on car to a 12-volt car. This video also shows how to get more speed from your existing 12-volt car by upgrading the gearboxes. At the end of this video, you'll have the knowledge and confidence to give your child's car more power. Let's get rolling. The first thing we're gonna do is swap out the stock six volt battery for a 12 volt battery. And this is a 12 volt, 12 amp sealed acid lead battery. Next, we're gonna to wanna to pick up a generic 12 volt charger so that we can recharge our battery. The, the charger that came with the car will not charge a 12 volt battery. Now I've seen some tutorials where they upgrade the battery, but not the stock motor. So if you're running a 12 volt battery on a six volt motor, the, the motor's eventually gonna burn out. And that's what's happened to this one. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna buy two gearboxes and the gearbox will come with a 12 volt motor. And that's what's in this one. You'll need to check the car to see how many gearboxes the car came with and most importantly, what is the size of the gearbox? Typically, the Power Wheels brand and the John Deere brand have specific gearboxes, while other brands use a generic gearbox. And that's what this is. This is just a generic gearbox. You need to make sure that your wheel moldings match your gearbox. So since most stock six volt cars only have one gearbox, you need to make sure that there's a hole for the second gearbox. And if the unused rear wheel has a mold, to fit the gearbox. So if we look at this wheel, it does not have a mold. So we need to buy an adaption connection piece, which is this, and we'll screw it in and we'll be able to use the second gearbox. And this is an example of a unused second wheel that already has a pre-molded uh, connection piece for the gearbox. Other equipment needed to complete the conversion include a screwdriver, a wire stripping tool, a wire crimping tool, four feet of a 16 gauge electrical wire, 12 gauge inline fuse with a spare 30 amp fuse. We'll also need an assortment of male and female uh, terminal connectors and two three-way connectors for a 16 gauge wire. Um, and I'll provide a list of all the materials needed in the description of this video. So now it's time to create the electrical connections. We'll have a negative wire with two female ends. One will be here and then it will connect up to the battery. We'll use our 12 gauge inline fuse to connect to the positive side of the battery. And then we'll create a bullet connection on the other end. And we'll need a little bit more length in the car. So we'll have a bullet connection on this one and then a female connection on this end. Next, we'll need to make the wire connections for each motor, and because we have two of them, we'll need to make two connection pieces.
All right, so now we're ready to connect our second gearbox connection piece to the rear wheel that does not already have the existing molding for it. When you pick up the uh, connection piece, it will not have the four screws that you need, so you'll need to pick that up on your own. And you can either use a screwdriver or a power drill to do this. So now we have the gearbox connection piece on both rear wheels. We can go ahead and remove the old gearbox and replace it with the two new gearboxes that have the faster motor in it. Now we're ready to remove the old gearbox and motor from the car and we'll start by disconnecting it from the car's wiring system. Before we remove the old gearbox and motor, we want to make sure our new gearbox and motor is ready to drop in. So here's the new gearbox and motor and it comes with this connection piece. The motor doesn't list the polarity, so we're just going to connect it and guess. And if when we turn on the car and it runs in reverse, then we'll just end up switching these two connection pieces. The old gearbox isn't screwed in, so it should come out pretty easily when we just pull up on it. And it does. So we'll go ahead and slip the new gearbox in, right into the axle. Goes in pretty easily. And we'll take the wheel, make sure the teeth are lined up, and we'll go through the axle as well and fit right into the gearbox. Might need to move the axle up just a little bit to give us a little more room. Drop the washer in. So now we're looking at the side of the car that originally did not have a gearbox. And you may see something like a plastic spacer like this that is on the car, or you may see a smaller spacer like this that sits on the car and there might be a metal piece right here. And that's what we had on this car. There was a spacer and then there's a little metal piece protruding out right here. So I had to use my little multi-use saw and saw off the metal so that the gearbox would fit on. So if you have a, uh, just the spacer like this, you're in luck. All you have to do is pull it off. If not, you'll have a little bit more work to saw off uh, the metal tabs right here so that the gearbox will fit on. So let's go ahead and drop in the new gearbox. We'll take the wheel again, we'll line the teeth up and put it through the axle. washer and nut. Up next, we're going to remove this connection piece that used to connect to the old motor. You want to make sure it's not the power connection piece, which is the red and black wiring. So we're just going to cut this off. We're going to strip the wire to create a connection point for our three-way wire connections that we created earlier. Okay, we're almost done. Next, we're gonna drop the battery in. And now's a good time to check to make sure the car's power is switched off before we make our connections. So we have our black connection piece, so black to black. And then red to red. And now's a good time to make sure that our fuse is in there. So that will connect up here. And we're done. Well, we're almost done. The last thing to do is to check to make sure the wheels spin in the right direction when we hit the pedal. 
Okay, so they're spinning in reverse. That means uh, we have our polarity switched on the motor. So we'll just need to switch those plugs and then we should be good to go. If you thought this video was helpful and want to see more videos like how I converted this car to an RC car, then subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and don't forget to like this video. Thanks and see you next time.